Well, folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel on YouTube. I'm Todd Kessner, just outside of Bozeman, Montana, out at the gun range. And uh, we've been doing a series on, on pocket pistols. We've done that for probably four videos now. And so uh, decided to try something different. And so my son was asking me, he said, you know, we, uh, we, we've read about the Colt Walker being able to hit a man-sized target. Uh, every time at 100 yards. It was a 100 yard pistol in 1847, uh, six shot revolver in 1847. So we thought, well, hey, let's try that. So uh, that's what we're out doing. We're gonna shoot the Colt Walker. I've got a, a uh, target down at 100 yards, a uh, steel plate. We'll see if we can hit that steel plate. I have not zeroed in or done any kind of work on the sights on this reproduction from you, Birdie. So, uh, it uh, hopefully will shoot somewhere close, or if we're making a group, I can make an adjustment and, and do a little Kentucky windage and, and get the thing get the thing on paper uh, or on the steel plate rather. So we're going to give this thing a try. There's been a million videos on the on the Colt Walker, uh, the history of the Colt Walker, but I'm going to just do a, a quick synopsis uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the gun, and uh, we'll talk about it just a little bit here to uh, just some of the basic facts anyway. So just before the design of the Colt Walker, Sam Colt was out of the firearms business. His Colt Patterson revolving pistol, which was produced in 1836 and 28 caliber, and a year later in 36 caliber, like the example shown here from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it was expensive to make, somewhat prone to breakage, and it carried a pretty big price tag. Uh, so by 1842, Colt was looking for other areas to put his creativity into as he went bankrupt. And he spent time working on, actually with uh, Samuel Morse of the Morse coat fame, on underwater explosives. Uh, but largely unknown to Sam Colt, the 36 caliber, nine inch barreled Patterson, having been sent to Texas, were revered by the Texas Rangers and later became known as the Texas Pattersons. So during the early part of the Mexican War, Captain Samuel Walker, who was a war hero, uh, who had learned the value of a repeating firearm during his, during his years with the Texas Rangers, he was sent back east to recruit soldiers for the war, uh, the Mexican War, which wasn't particularly popular in the east, and so uh, he was there to recruit young men to come and fight, and also to track down Sam Colt. So Walker envisioned a larger more powerful version of the Patterson revolver. And the design that he and Sam Colt ended up with once they met up and worked on this was known as the, became known as the Colt Walker or was brought out as the Colt Walker, or sometimes even the Walker Colt. It was a larger than the Patterson, 44 caliber, six shot revolving pistol with a nine inch barrel. And this thing weighs four pounds, nine ounces empty, and therefore was often carried in pairs in saddle, saddle mounted pommel holsters providing 12 shots without reloading because you had two of them. The design was completed in 1846 and by the midsummer of 1847 a thousand of these walkers were delivered to the front lines in, uh, in Mexico. Colt had no factory. Uh, he had been bankrupt since 1842 so he contracted with Eli Whitney Jr who you may recognize uh, the name, he's the son of the inventor of the cotton gin, and Eli Whitney Jr. tooled up and produced these guns. So with this newfound success, Colt quickly established a factory of his own in Hartford, Connecticut, and he began manufacturing his subsequent models uh, there in Hartford. The military Colt Walkers were meant to shoot conical bullets, and that's why I'm shooting conical bullets uh, today. Colt's contract, for the walker with the U.S. Army specified that a bullet mold to cast one elongated bullet or ball, one elongated ball to be sent with every 10 pistols and a bullet mold to cast six elongated balls to be sent with every 50 pistols. The mold, the, the mold itself produced a 220 grain conical with no heel on it. This made the bullet very difficult to keep straight when you're trying to load and, and drive that down into the chamber. The first charge recommenda recommendation of the first charge was 60 grains of powder. But after a few hundred cylinders burst, upwards around 300 of them, the charge was reduced to 50 grains. 
and that's going to be the charge that we're shooting today is the uh, 50 grain historical charge you know after the the early mishaps because that original walker conical is not available uh, so it can't be perfectly historically correct I'm using an early Dragoon bullet uh, that replaced the Walker conical in the early 1850s. This is a .457 bullet of about 259 grains and is cast from an era's gone bullet mold made from an original Dragoon bullet uh, from the early 1850s. So the greatest improvement in this particular bullet is the healed base and you're going to see how much easier that is to load uh, when you've got that healed base. So we are not perfectly period correct with our Italian replica, our modern black powder, and a bullet invented after the Mexican War. But we're probably about as close as we're going to get. And so uh, we're going to give this thing a try and, um, and just see what we can do at 100 yards with the conical bullet, traditional style bullet used in the Colt Walker. So this is Era's Gone Bullet Mold, Dragoon Bullet Mold, 259 grain, so a little bit heavier than the original Walker bullet, but it's as close as we can get uh, today. And so uh, we're going to give this thing a try and see if I can hit that steel plate from 100 yards with this 9-inch uh, barrel Colt Walker. So we're going to go down there and take a look at it and let's see if uh, if anything showed up in any kind of group at all on that cardboard behind the uh, behind the target and we'll uh, we'll see what we find out and make some adjustments well folks seldom do we fail at this level <laughs> because we can't figure out uh, what happened i certainly did not hit the plate at 100 yards uh, the cardboard slid down, so we're thinking that some of them went high just from my spotter here. And uh, cardboard slid down, don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell in the back stop that's, that's absolutely full of, of bullet holes already. So uh, we're going to load her up again. Sometimes you just get a little cocky thinking that, uh, you know, off the bench I'm going to be able to do this. Um, no, I didn't freehand it, I was on my elbows, but didn't have a dead rest either, and so uh, thinking I could make that happen. So maybe too much coffee and not enough protein if you noticed uh, the shakiness, and so that didn't help either. So i got to get myself a dead rest. We're going to try uh, 2F powder next. We shot 3F. If they are going high, I've repositioned the cardboard so that we'll be able to tell that. If they're going really wide, that's going to be hard to, hard to say. So we're going to give this thing a try, and if we fail at this level again, we're just going to have to back up to uh, 50 yards, come out with a whole bunch of cardboard, and plaster the back of this thing with, uh, behind this target with cardboard and see where in the world it's going at 50, and then go up to, to 100. So this is going to turn into, unless this 2F powder just changes the whole world for us here, um, this might become a, a two-parter at least. So anyway, let's go back, load her up, and uh, with 2F this time, same bullet, 50 grains, see if we can't get this thing to uh, appear on the cardboard anyway. Well, some of you are probably wondering why I'm not uh, showing the, the loading technique here. And um, the reason for that is, is that the, the reproductions of the walker don't have a recess big enough on them to accommodate the historically correct bullet. 
So when I put that bullet on top of my cylinder and I rotate it, try to rotate it underneath there, this is not, the cutout is not large enough to, to fit that bullet. And so uh, something that they just didn't think about apparently in the, in the reproductions, considered it to be a round ball shooter only, we wouldn't get into the historical conicals. Um, so it's, loading is a very slow and arduous task that uh, they didn't want to bore you to death with. But I do have a left uh, one chamber, it's charged with, uh, we're on the 2F powder now, Go-X. So I've got the 50 grains of Go-X in it. So the way you get around this without taking a, a grinder de Dremel tool to your, uh, to your loading area uh, is just have to take the gun apart. And with every single round, I've had to take the gun apart. But this will display pretty well how this uh, heel bullet helps center this bullet in the in the cylinder chamber so that uh, it's much easier to ram and ram in straight. So I've got my 50 grains in. It fits perfectly down inside there. Again, this is the Dragoon bullet that came out just a few years after the Walker, uh, about early 1850s. And so I'm gonna set that down on the gun to get the cylinder where it's supposed to be. Then I've gotta put my barrel back on, put my barrel wedge in. And at this point, get it through both sides, there we go. At this point, it fits under the rammer just fine. So I can drop down my loading lever, I can ram this home without any problem at all. I just can't rotate it in there. So uh, that makes loading a very long, long process. So I'm gonna ram this down, get it down below the, the front of that chamber. And, and we are all set. The other thing you might have noticed is one of the flaws of, of the walker, and I'm sure you've seen this before, is that the latch to hold this loading lever up is just this straight spring which clips on the inside of the little cavity here on the inside of the, uh, of the loading lever. And that was the way they did it with the Patterson revolver. The Patterson revolver was as small as a 28 caliber up to a 36. I'm assuming, I'm just guessing, but uh, I would think that on the Patterson you probably didn't see the loading lever drop because on that smaller gun with that smaller load and small caliber, there just wasn't the recoil that the walker has uh, to, uh, to drop that loading lever. What that'll do is it'll go right down into your cylinder and lock the gun up until you slap it back up again. And so a little bit later, uh, you would see, actually some of the walkers were later uh, uh, modified to uh, put a latch right at the end, just like the rest of the cap and ball revolvers, right at the end of the loading lever that held it much, much better. And of course, the next models that came out, the Dragoons, did have a latch at the end of the, at the, end of the loading lever. So we're just gonna live with this, and I'll just slap her back up when we need to, and we'll give our, uh, our next six shots a try. So I'm gonna grease the front of these things and put the caps on and away we go. All right, well let's give it a try here with the 50 grains of 2F Go-X and the same 259 grain conical. All right, well there's our six shots with the 50 grains of 2F Go-X and uh, I was hearing, hearing some uh, cardboard hits that time. So uh, let's go down and take a look and see, what, uh, see what, we've, what we've got down here and maybe we can at least get a clue on where this, thing, where this thing's been going. All right, so here we are out here with our, uh, this is a 50 grains of 2F Go-X and the same 
my ear is gone dragoon bullet uh, that we shot the with the first round in 259 grains it appears now that we got our got our cardboard target set up uh, properly that I've got that almost looks like two shots right there so I've got at least five maybe all six just a little bit to the right if you're aiming if you're looking straight onto the target uh, just a little bit to the right and obviously higher they would hit the target so I'm a little surprised about how, about how high those rounds are going at 100 yards. Uh, that's something you expect with a cap and ball revolver up close because the front sight is just such a low sight that uh, you really think that uh, you're gonna shoot high or close up but at 100 yards it would drop enough, but it has not. So that's a nice clue to know. I might actually be able to hit this darn steel thing if, uh, if I bring it and aim about halfway up the base and maybe I would hit the, hit the steel target. At least we're on cardboard now. So this is with the 2F powder. A little bit happier with that. Well, we learned a little bit while we were here out, out here at the range. Uh, at least we know where these bullets are going. We can zero this in a little bit, a little bit better next time. And you know, we think of these ideas, and we just kind of come out to the range and we, we give them a try, and we, we start bringing you with us. And and uh, we don't stage any of this stuff. We succeed or we fail on on camera, and it's just like you're all here watching us succeed and fail for the first time around. And and. Uh, just appreciate you watching, even when it doesn't go as go as planned, or it's not necessarily yet impressive. We're going to zero this in, and we probably can we can probably get it. So we can hit a man-sized target every time at 100 yards, like the Texas Ranger said we could. We're going to keep working at it. Uh, sure, appreciate you watching the video, and if you like it, hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We're going to keep trying at this thing. Uh, we'll get this gun zeroed in. Go back to some pocket pistols as well. Finish up that series but just uh, just appreciate you uh, watching the video and, and thanks for coming I don't think I put in my earplugs Did I? What the devil was I saying that for? I know, but now it's, I can't splice it together because I speak too fast. And so I, my head's like. Let me. <clears throat> Jeez.